Hey, how's it going? We are in Luke chapter 14, verses 1 through 14 today. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. There in front of him was a man suffering from dropsy. Jesus asked the Pharisees and experts in the law, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. So taking hold of the man, he healed him and sent him away. Then he asked them, If one of you has a son or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull him out? And they had nothing to say. When he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host will invite both of, uh, I'm sorry, the host who invited both of you will come to you and say, "Give this man your seat." Then humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, "Friend, move up to a better place." Then you will be honored in the presence of all your fellow guests. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Then Jesus said to his host, When you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they might, might invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. All right, so some interesting stuff. A big dinner going on at a Pharisee's house on the Sabbath. So I guess they could have big dinners, um, but there's a lot of things you couldn't do, like heal somebody with dropsy. So dropsy, an interesting interesting diagnosis there. So uh, we have this same very similar uh, interaction between the religious leaders, the Pharisees, and Jesus on healing on the Sabbath, as we saw in uh, chapter 13. So here we've got the healing of the crippled woman on the Sabbath. Here we've got the healing with the guy with dropsy on the Sabbath. Very similar descriptions, you know, literally on the same page in this Bible anyway, uh, the way this one is printed. And so we see this has come up on a bunch of occasions. And Jesus is trying to make the point, look, not healing somebody on the Sabbath is ridiculous. That's a dumb rule. It apparently was not a long, drawn-out process. Uh, you know, you just take care of praying for somebody and believe in God, and then there you go. So let's not make a big religious problem out of that. So then he moves on from that into taking the position of honor versus the lowest position at the banquet. And so everybody was trying to fight their way into the front of the line. And Jesus is like, hey, you know what? Um, go sit in the back and then you'll be brought forward. And that's a way better way to go. Don't push yourself to the top. Let it happen naturally. Um, and then, you know, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted. That can take some time. There might be a process there that you have to go through. But, uh, uh, you know, because at first you're sitting in the lower spot. But then let it naturally happen. Let the Lord exalt you. Let Him pick you up. Let your actions, your character, and who you are speak rather than your boasting and your budging into the front of the line. So uh, it works out way better. And then He says to the, uh, to the host, you know, don't invite people that can repay you by inviting you to their thing. Invite people who can't. You know, the poor, the lame, the blind, the crippled. Uh, invite them and you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. So Jesus here is saying, you know, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven that you will receive later in the next life. So there you go. Um, ignore social return on investment when you're inviting people over. Now, I don't think Jesus was saying you can't invite anyone over that has any means whatsoever. Um, you know, it's maybe a little overstated in verse 12, 
But uh, I do believe that what he's saying is, is make sure you don't exclude those who can never pay you back. Make sure that you invite them uh, and have them there. God will straighten that out later. So let's pray to be faithful and humble over time, you know, letting the Lord be the one who exalts us to trust in God for the increase. Heavenly Father, help us not to try to run to the front of the line and prove ourselves when maybe we haven't even developed those things, our own character and our own heart, our own ability levels. But Lord, let us take the time to, um, to let you lift us up to those higher positions. Lord, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't help when we try to budge into the front of the line and then we're not even ready to be in the front of the line. Lord, help us to see how we can grow ourselves and how we can let you uh, see us through that process of personal growth and, uh, and getting some respect from other people and being put into a place of value. Help us to see how to do that so that we don't try to push ourselves to the front when we don't belong there, but that we let you move us along up to the front. So, Father, give us wisdom with this. Help us to understand how that all works and give us the patience to work through that process as well. In Jesus' name, amen.